sweet friends. Welcome back to Mary's Nest. Today I'm starting my Christmas cooking series and we're going to begin with making a giant party platter that's perfect for entertaining. What I love about entertaining with party platters is that you can make everything in advance and then put it down on your kitchen island or your kitchen table or your dining room table or your coffee table in your living room, wherever you're going to entertain, and then all you need to do is get the beverages ready. And then you don't have to worry about going into the kitchen and cooking this, that, and the other thing, and you can just enjoy your company. And I especially like to serve this way on uh, Christmas Eve. And what's nice about making a giant party platter like this is that you can put everything on one platter from appetizers to the main event to the dessert. And I have to thank my sweet friend Sandy who has a blog that gave me this idea for doing a giant party planner. And I'll be sure to put a link to her uh, blog below and you can go over and look at all the various ideas she has for party platters. Now the first thing you need to do is pick out the type of platter that you want to use. Uh, this is just a big tray. Uh, you could use a large plate, uh, you know, almost like a large platter. Um, or different trays, or even if you don't have one big tray, you could put a couple of smaller trays together. Now, sometimes trays are food safe, sometimes they're not. And I know that some people have said that when they use a uh, uh, tray that's not food safe, they'll sand it down slightly and maybe coat it with beeswax or mineral oil. I have not done that, and I'm not sure I'm 100% comfortable with that. So what I like to do is always put down parchment paper before I start putting the food on my tray. And that also makes cleanup really easy. And one more thing I want to say before we start putting food on the platter is that I'll provide you with a diagram that you can download and print out and use as your guide when you put your party platter together. So be sure to check the description below where I'll put a link to my website where you can download that guide. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cover my tray with parchment paper and I'm going to bring you in closer as I lay out all the food so you can see exactly what I do. Well, I've got my tray all covered with parchment paper. And what I wanted to also mention was that this, the interior of this tray is 27 inches. So if you're trying to duplicate this exactly, you'll want to have a tray that's 27 inches. But as I said earlier, if you don't have that, no problem. You can break up what I'm going to, the different foods that I'm going to put on here, you can break up onto smaller trays. Well, let's come on in closer and we'll start going over all the goodies. Now the first thing that I like to do is put some sort of decorative plate right in the middle. And on this, I put whatever is the sort of focal point. And in this case, it's going to be a baked brie with uh, cherries uh, or, or cherry preserves and pistachios. It's just going to be delicious. Um, but you could also put baked ricotta with maybe a little lemon zest and olive oil, uh, whatever you want. And if you want to do something that's just store-bought uh, and uh, just a nice uh, wedge of cheese or something, some Stilton maybe, uh, which is always very popular at Christmas time. It's a type of blue cheese, a Stilton. Uh, you could put uh, and sprinkle some uh, toasted walnuts on top and drizzle it with honey. That's very easy to do. So, but that's going to be the focal point. So I'm just going to put that right in the middle. The next thing I like to do is to take some fruit. And in this case, since citrus is so in season right now, I'm going to try to pick uh, some of my best looking um, clementines. And I'm going to Put them all around the plate. You could do it up like this or sideways, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to continue with that, putting the clementines all around the uh, center plate. Well, I've got the clementines all around my plate, and not only uh, do they add a little pop of color, they're nice because people can just pick one and peel it and enjoy it. And they've all been washed. The next thing I'm going to do is put some bread and crackers on the plate. And I like to do a combination of both because along with the meats and cheeses that we're going to add to this plate or to this platter, uh, some people may enjoy making a sandwich and other people may enjoy just putting uh, the meat or the cheese uh, on a cracker. So I've got a nice loaf here of a uh, rosemary sourdough with some seeds in it and I'm going to slice this up. You can again, you can use bread that you've baked and or uh, something that you buy at the store. If you buy it at the store, don't have them slice it for you. Slice it yourself when you get home. That way you can decide on the thickness and the type of slices that you want to put on your platter. 
So as you can see, I'm slicing this a little on the thick side to make it nice and generous. And then all I'm gonna do is just take the bread and line it up like this to the edge of the tray. And I'm gonna do that on either side. This way, no matter where people are sitting, they can easily access a slice of bread if they'd like it. Well, I've got the bread all laid out. And as I said, it's just a simple, um, sourdough uh, with some rye and a few seeds, flax seeds in this case, and I'll link in the iCards uh, to my sourdough, uh, foolproof sourdough starter that's made with rye flour to make breads like this. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is just take some uh, store-bought crackers and I'm going to put them right along uh, the side of, of some of the bread. The next thing I'm going to do is put around some little ramekins that'll hold condiments. And you can also add additional ramekins of different sizes if you'd like to maybe do spice nuts or something like that. Well, I've got some pepper jelly in each of these little ramekins, which is nice at holiday time. Put it, you know, on the bread or the cracker, whatever the case may be. And it's got red and green flecks in it, which is always so cute at this time of year. Then over here, I've got the old style uh, stone ground mustard. And then over here, I've got some Dijon. And then in each of these other little ramekins, I've got some cinnamon spiced nuts, uh, pecans specifically, being that it's Central Texas, we've got lots of pecans here. Uh, and those are always a hit. But this is very flexible and certainly put in whatever condiments you like and any type of nuts you like. Uh, you can do rosemary and salted spice nuts or the cinnamon nuts. You can go sweet or savory, whatever works for you. Now we're gonna move on to the meats, finally, right? <laughs> I've got three types here. I've got the Genoa salami, the hot supper setto, and the pepper salami. And I'm gonna slice these up and we'll put them on the tray. Well, I've got all my salami on the party platter. Now we're gonna add some more meats and cheeses. Now I'm gonna add the sliced cheeses. And these are nice. I just buy them like this at a Costco or a Sam's, and they also have it at my grocery store. And it makes it very easy. They're already sliced and even already lined up. And I'm just gonna transfer them right onto the party platter. Well, I've got my cheese is all on my platter. Now I've also got some sliced, very thinly sliced pepperoni here. And I'm actually going to save this till later because we'll fold up pieces and we'll fit it in around where we might have some openings. And now I'm going to add some shrimp, which will be delightful. Well, I've got my shrimp on the party platter along with some cocktail sauce. And now I'm going to add some uh, washed and dried grapes that I'll put in different places around the platter. And now I've just added some grapes, which make for nice nibbles. And now we're going to get ready to add a few sweet treats. And now, since this is for Christmas time, I'm going to add a few uh, little sweet treats, some kisses in red, green, and silver wrapping. Well, I've got the little chocolates on, and now I'm just going to put a few cookies. You can either do ones that you home bake, or you can use store-bought. Well, I've gotten a few sweet treats on either side, and I really, I mean, it's pretty well packed, so I don't think that I'm going to tuck in any um, pepperoni slices as I originally thought, but usually if there are a little openings here or there, whatever the case may be, you can easily do that. Alrighty, now for the brie. Well, now we've got the baked brie with the cherries and pistachios in the center for the piece de resistance, and our giant party platter is finished. Now that you see how easy it is to put together a giant party platter, I hope you'll give this a try. Well, my guests are going to be here soon, so I better get ready. But I hope you like this video and that you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for joining me here, and I look forward to having you join me again right here in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless. Before you go, be sure to check out these videos. I think you'll like them too. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel, click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.